We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Just just ignore the chat here, but uh, we're doing all right. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Always ignore the chat. That 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 should be a. Uh... Oh damn, Austin's not here. I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> tell him add ignore the chat to the Sloopcast Bible. Uh, to be fair, King Man, I don't, I don't, I don't clap. If you've noticed, he actually snaps. Yes. I don't know why. All right. Just to be different. Uh, so today is our Sloop Picks episode. This is our Friday episode where we pick six games to to um, pick the over under on some interesting games. We'll talk about games, other games, and uh, have some fun with this here. So we we do our picks through uh, CBS Sports. We lock them in on Wednesday. Is it? I think Wednesday. C CBS not locks them in on Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Okay. So some of them might be off by a few points or whatever, but we are going by whatever CBS Sports uh, Pick'em has. Uh, so with that being said, Jared, um, we'll jump right into it. Uh, we got a pair of noon games we're going to talk about here. We're going to start over at the Big 12 with TCU and Kansas. TCU and Kansas and undefeated Jayhawks, Jared. Can they stay undefeated this weekend? They are they are a um going up against TCU, who's a six and a half point favorite. Yeah. Um Six and a half point favorite. I find that interesting. Um, Kansas obviously has been on a bit of a hot streak. Bit of a hot streak for, excuse me, Kentucky. No, Kansas. I said it right the first time. Getting lost. All right. Uh, yeah. Kansas is uh, not just a basketball school, at least not this year, it would seem. Um, now, we can take a look at their at their schedule. And see that, like, there's good teams on here. ISU's mm -hmm. not a bad team. West Virginia's not a bad team. Houston, for a group of five team, is not a bad team. Um, there aren't any great teams, though. Um, this will probably be the first real test for them. Um, yes. But at the same time, if you go over, you look at TCU's schedule, they did just slaughter Oklahoma. And say what you want to say about <laughs> Oklahoma this year. Okay. Like I, I hear you. I hear they're, they're, they're not good, but they slot like they decimated Oklahoma. But to be fair, but to be fair, Jared, but to be fair. Actually, hey. no, I, I, I take, I'll take that back. Cause I'm looking at this wrong. Uh, <laughs> they played Iowa state uh, <laughs> last year. Cause I, I, yeah. saw, I saw, I hate, I hate that ESPN does that. Um, but yeah, they, they beat Colorado with a decent, uh, they, they got an FCS win. They didn't look great against TCU or excuse me, against SMU at TCU didn't look great against SMU. Um, I, I'm not, I am not sold that either of these teams are quote unquote for real. No, I mean, yes, they're both undefeated, but yeah, I just, I, I really, I really like TCU for, uh, at least from their office production here. I really like TCU in this game here to, to head on over to, uh, to Kansas and uh, win this game. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take, I'll take TCU to cover here. I just, I think that win last week really pushed them over to, for me to really really start paying more attention to TCU as a, um, maybe, maybe they could be that, that um, team that can make some splash towards the end of the season here. So I'll, I'll give, um, I'll give, I will take TCU in the points. Yeah. Um, I, I, I totally get where Kyle's coming from. TCU does put up some serious, uh, serious points and some serious yards. Again, though, the, the the competition level is is obviously to be questioned. Um, 
I feel like both of these teams, even though we're like officially in October now, I feel like both of these teams still feel kind of mysterious to me. Um, it's and like I would love to be like, oh, and, and this is the week where we find out which one of these teams is. I just don't know if either of these teams are real, if I'm being super honest. Um, Kyle, when in doubt, pick the underdog. Give me Kansas. All right. Our first, our first. Uh... But hold on real quick. Uh, the over under currently at 68 and a half. I, uh, uh, they're gonna, over. They're going to smash the shit out of that. Just smash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And our guest picker for this week is uh, Buckeye Esquire. Uh, he, he helped us with uh, some picks in our Thursday episode in our New Year Enemy for Michigan State. And he's going. he has a few things with each of these picks here. Uh, so for the TCU Kansas game, he says Kansas has been a feel good story of the year. And rightly, Max Duggan and Jalen Daniels has been very, has been having some of the best seasons for quarterbacks nationwide after a completely embarrassing Oklahoma. I think TCU wins. But wait. He says, knock, knock, knock. Who is it? Is that sun card at the back door? Let him in. Jayhawks sneaky cover late. Kyle, I'm not going to lie. I kind of zoned out halfway just like for a, just for like a second in there. And then I came back and I didn't know what I came back into. <laughs> All right. See, see you, Matt. See you, Buckeye Matt. So, and welcome, so he's, Kabuto. He's got, he, he, he agrees with you, Jared, with uh, Jayhawks covering. All right. The second noon game here is Tennessee and LSU. Uh, noon game and Tennessee is a two and a half point favorite. Now I'm really, I'm really questioning here. Yes, I know it's, it's at LSU. LSU is not that good, Jared. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of stumped on why uh, LSU or excuse me, Tennessee is only a two and a half point favorite. And then I, and then I realized, oh yeah, I I don't think I don't I don't I, I know Tennessee's put up some big numbers this year, but they also have uh, played teams like Ball State and Akron and put up some big numbers during those games. But I I, I think this might be a really close game here. Gangland says I don't, really like, I don't really like I don't really like either team to be honest. I really don't, but. Um, this is pretty much a pick 'em game here, and I'll I'll just take Tennessee to to win this game. So I'll I'll, I'll take Tennessee to cover. Gangland says, but they also almost lost to Florida. Here's the thing, Gangland. They also almost lost to Pitt. They did. And I, they they went into overtime. And I will die on this hill that had Slovis stayed healthy, that they do lose to Pitt. If if Pitt had, yeah. 100%. Pitt would have won that game had Slovis not got hurt. 100%. Yep. Um, yep. I'm just I'm just saying like yeah, they slaughtered Ball State and they slaughtered Akron, but Florida's not very good and they only beat Florida by 5. They should have lost to Pitt. Make no mistake about that. They should have lost to Pitt. But at the same so like like uh, Tennessee is definitely not a top ten team, but I've said it a thousand times and I know we're on we're on huddle now, so I'll feel free to repeat myself like like that whatever like whatever stop myself from repeating myself. But when it comes to like top ten teams, there aren't ten top ten teams. So this is just like the latest number eight that's gonna lose at some point. Like it's just like it's it's there's not 10 top 10 teams, um, but at the same time, so like, I don't like Tennessee that much, but at the same time, we take a look at LSU barely wins over a terrible, terrible Auburn team. And then That's outside the of the, to me, then they have a win over New Mexico, uh, a win over uh, the Southern Jaguars. Um, and then an oak and then like a like a 15 point win against mississippi state and mississippi state is kind of having an okay season so like that's their best win right 
Yeah. Yeah. So again, kind of like with TCU and in Kansas, I don't, I don't particularly feel like going to bat for either of these teams. So I'm going to, Gonna gonna go with the points again. I'm gonna take LSU. All right. All right. And Buckeye Esquire has here uh operator. Won't you put me on through uh Tennessee's uh whipping ass down in Baton Rouge? They'll be singing Rocky Top and Death Valley. Tennessee wins and covers. <laughs> I'll take Brian Kelly with the butt rub. <laughs> Um, Zach says the SEC is just down this year. I'm telling you right now, everyone's down this year. I'm there's not a good, like middle class of football this year. Um, college football is starting, and I think it's because of the transfer portal. College football is starting to experience, um, a lot of parody. Balancing. Like, yeah, I think we're starting to see some parody in college football, but that hasn't um, sloop sloop picks LV logo is fire. Oh, thank you. Uh, that uh, it was actually Kyle's idea. That's probably the most Kyle logo we have. Um, parody or parity. I'm from Ohio. I don't know. That those are two separate words <laughs> from a pronunciation <laughs> standpoint. Um yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I think that overall college football is starting to balance itself. I mean, you still but not at the top, still, though. It's still top heavy right now. I mean, you got your four or five teams that's um, top heavy. Yeah, I, I know overall, Jared, overall. <laughs> but yeah, I, the, a lot of these other teams are really starting to balance themselves out here. But uh, speaking of balancing themselves out, UCLA undefeated. Head, heading um hosting Utah um in our 330 slot here. Utah is a three and a half point favorite here. Uh big surprise seeing seeing the Bruins undefeated five games in here. Uh I mean you can look at their schedule like oh oh they played uh bowling green and Alabama State and Southern Alabama and Colorado. Yeah definitely should win those games but they, they had a a pretty good showing against a a a really decent uh, Washington team that we've really seen. Um, everybody in our chat's uh, favorite quarterback here has been um, overall doing pretty well. Uh, but yeah, they they had a great win last weekend against Washington, and yeah, things are really starting to look up for UCLA here. Um, but I I I just don't know if I can really. I, I really want to take I really want to take Utah here because I think Utah is the better team here, but I, I just I feel like something's just off with them. Yeah, they, they yeah. should have they should have beaten Florida, uh, and they've taken care of business against teams they definitely should have taken care of here. I just feel like there's just something off about Utah here. So, um, it, it's it's that one it's that um one of our uh uh rules jared when in doubt to pick the quarterback and uh i'll pick ucla in this one yeah i think that's probably i don't know i don't know um the, the my problem is very similar to yours where i do think utah is the better team uh but you're you're right they've they have felt somewhat off um they should they should have beat florida they didn't um and in florida and at the time that sort of felt like two good teams but in retrospect eh, uh, is cam rising healthy that's another big question heading into the game um i i think he's supposed to play but you know how it is with college football and injuries right like you you just don't know. Um, no, no one no one tells the truth about those things. Uh, so yeah, if you're if you're looking at 
I'm kind of just going Utah in this game. Um, and I don't even necessarily have a great feeling as to why that is. Um, I feel much, much better. I think if it were um, like two and a half as opposed to four and a half, um, that would probably change my mind, but it's not. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to, I'm going to go with Utah here. All right. All right. And Esquire has for this game. Could it be that the pack is better than we thought this year? I don't think so. I right, uh, Esquire, Esquire says, I had a law school buddy who went to Utah. He was insane and kept talking up the, the MUSS, the Mighty Utah Student Section. Uh, Utah was my preseason pick to win the Pac-12, and I still feel solid about that. Weird one trip to the swamp, uh, not notwithstanding, but... I don't know how well the must travels in future Big Ten brethren. UCLA has been scraping hard all year. Utah wins, but UCLA covers. I think that's probably a fair assessment, to be honest with you. I, I really don't like four and a half. All right, and our like other, Utah uh, more. Yep, and our other afternoon game is the Ohio State-Michigan State game, which you can uh, listen to our thoughts about that in our Thursday episode. So we're going to move on to a trio of night games. Uh, so first off, we are going to stick with the Big Ten here. And, oh, oh boy, Jared. Oh, boy. <laughs> Iowa and Illinois. Listen. Every time I do the sloop picks, not every time, but a lot of times I do the sloop picks, there's like six games that I'm absolutely going to include in the sloop picks. And then there's the seventh one. Yeah. This is, this is that one. <laughs> this is that one. This you know, is I want to see one. whatever, I, I want to see what the over under is. Oh, well, Illinois is a three and a half point favorite here, but I, what what do you guess, Jared? Hold on, hold on. No one look. No one look. No one. Look. I already I know. You're know. Gonna, I know you're going to look, Gangland, but don't look here. What is the over under Bye, in this? What is the over under in this game? What do you think it is? Yeah, right, that, guess, guess we don't want land. you to know. That's the point. Yes, we, we want don't you want to guess. you to know. Guess twenty. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, it, 36 and a half. It, yeah, 36 and a half. This isn't the monsoon d that uh, that uh, NC State and Notre Dame played uh, a few years ago, where it was a, I think, a total of 17. No, uh, no, it was a total of 13 points <laughs> scored in that game. <laughs> but now 36 and a half points. Yeah, I, I may take the under in that one. Uh you got one of the worst offenses in the in the country, but yet yet one of one of the best one of the best defenses in the country in in Iowa as well too, and Illinois just really surprising this year. They're they're four and one this year, Jared. They are four yeah. and one, uh, and they lost to awful Indiana somehow. Yeah, like I, I honestly, Kyle, rewind yourself to rewind yourself to like early August, right? If I said to you, okay, Indiana's first, or excuse me, Illinois' first four games, Wyoming, mm -hmm. Indiana, Virginia, uh, Tennessee, Chattanooga. And then I told you that they were going to win three of those games. First, you would have called me a liar. <laughs> no, I, I would have I thought they would have won three of those games. Who would you have? Who would you have picked out as the loss? Virginia. Yeah. Indiana's terrible. I don't know. It's it's hard for me to jump fully on the Illini bandwagon. I don't. I don't. I don't like juxt. I don't like juxtaposing Illini and bandwagons. Um, but I don't like. I don't like. Uh, it's hard for me to fully jump on board here because they lost to Indiana. And I know, I know that they just beat Wisconsin. 
congrats. Um, I think Ohio State gets credit for that one because every time someone plays Ohio State, they lose twice. Um, as far as Iowa being a great defense, I don't know. I mean, I get that they're pretty good. All but... Illinois, all Illinois needs to do is score 15, 17 points. No, one, to win 100, this game. One hundred percent, but. I, I I do think Illinois wins this game. I, I I have very little concern about that. It's that it's at three and a half. Feels like two and a half. I might feel I I would take it in a heartbeat. I wouldn't even think about it. I would just take Illinois and shut the hell up. Three and a half in a game in which we don't expect many points to be scored at all. All of a sudden feels like a lot. Like if there's only 30 points, if there's only 30 points scored in the game, winning by four all of a sudden feels very difficult, right? Yeah. So the the point the the over under 36 and a half here, yeah, that's a that's a 20 set 20 to 17 game. And 17 points seems like a lot for <laughs> for Iowa. Right. Like because like in the Big 12, you know, if we rewind for a second and go back to like TCU Kansas. That's a six and a half game, right? Mm -hmm. To me, that six and a half is less significant than the three and a half with Iowa and Illinois. I mean, because like <laughs> based on the percentage of the points scored, I bet it will be. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pick Illinois here um, only because I've lost utter faith in Iowa. But man, that Indiana game, that three loss, that three point loss to Indiana is telling me I'm being stupid for doing this, but I'm going to take Illinois. Yeah, I'll take I'll take the fighting birds here. I I just I, like I uh, jokingly uh, just mentioned here, Iowa's offense is crap, averaging 240 yards a game. Total offense. That's, that's not passing. That's not rushing. That's 240 yards total for the game. That's, that's that's what that's what Illinois averages in their passing yards per game. <laughs> I'll, I'll take Illinois to cover here. And Esquire with his pick here. Uh, this game should be sponsored by Sharon Williams, as it is likely to be as exciting as watching paint dry. Iowa has an offense that makes the 1880s look progressive. Illinois has that sneaky Burt energy that's that's hard to quantify three and a half seems like a tight spread until you consider that's at least two scores for Iowa the big 10 West is, is a lawless unpredictable wasteland of mediocrity. And because of that, I think that Illinois is likely to follow their, uh, bludgeoning of, of Wisconsin with a complete dud game against, uh, nepotism. You, Hawkeyes to cover. Yeah. Um, Bert is, I believe Bert, Bert is an Iowa guy. I, did he not play or I, he has like close ties to Iowa. He's, he's held, he's held now two different head coaching gigs in the, in the big 10. I think I'm right. Gangland. I think I'm right. I just don't know. I, I I just I feel like I feel like Kirk Ferentz is on the Joe Pa plan at Iowa though. He's gonna have to yeah. die. He, he played. Yeah, he played. He played in Iowa, and he was a graduate assistant in the linebacker coach at Iowa. I believe he has a Hawkeye tattoo, which was always a bit awkward when they had to eventually play Iowa. <laughs> Either at Wisconsin or now at Illinois. All right. Kyle, what's next? All right. The uh and you're right, he does have an Iowa tattoo. All right. Uh <laughs> BYU and Notre Dame is our second 730 slot. Notre Dame is a three and a half point favorite here over the ranked BYU team. I go in first, you go in first. I'll let you I'll let you go first, Jared. I'm going first. All right. Um, I So once again, let's take a look at these teams schedules. Notre Dame had a had a rough start. 
lost to Ohio State. And then, but as we've covered, every team that's lost to Ohio State so far this year has then turned around and, and lost again, right? So then it, but it was Marshall, but it was Marshall. Marshall, Marshall. Then they beat Cal. Cal's not good and it wasn't an impressive win. Um, then they beat the, the Tar Heels and like Tar Heels feel like a weird team. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Um, they, they collectively, they win a game against Appy state where they collectively scored 124 points. Um, they <laughs> barely beat Georgia state. Uh, then they turned around and, and destroyed Virginia tech the Tar Heels feel like a team without much consistency right now. Mac Brown needs to stay retired. I mean, no, he's, he's absolutely raised the profile at, at North Carolina. Yes. He's going to leave North Carolina much better than he found it. And I think that that's all you can ever ask of a coach. Um, all right. Notre he's Dame not a great Green job. Uh, that, Dame. BYU. Okay. Yeah, an okay showing against Utah State, who's not very good. An okay showing against Wyoming, who's not very good. Got run off the field by Oregon. Um, they went to two overtime with Baylor, and Baylor's a pretty good team. They're not anything great. Um, I feel like I see a team on an upswing with Notre Dame, and I kind of want to... I kind of want to ride that upswing with Notre Dame, I think. Um, so I do think that they win this football game. I'm looking at the three and a half, uh, much, much like the previous game we talked about. I'd feel much more comfortable if it were two and a half. Um, I think I'm going to have to go with when in doubt, pick the underdog on this one. Um, I do think Notre Dame wins this, but the three and a half scares me. Yeah, it, it, it definitely, it definitely does here. And honestly, this game's going to really depend on how, uh, Drew Pine does for, for Notre Dame here. He, yeah, he, he's, he's done pretty, pretty well. I'm looking at his, uh, his average here and, uh, 69.8% completion. Uh, six touchdowns and interception for the year. And he's only played really two full games. He he only played a handful of snaps um, against Marshall, but in the, the other two game two recent games. Yeah. He's, he's been, he's been doing pretty well. 70% completion, 34% completion, no interceptions since being the starter. He's got to really maintain that if Notre Dame is going to win this game, but, I just have a feeling that in this game here up against a a better defense I I feel I feel like BYU will um will come out top here so I'm going to I'm going to pick the Cougars uh to win this game so by default there or yeah so that means that I'll have uh BYU to cover All right One last game Kyle who we got uh, oh, sorry, that, Esquire, 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 my bad. Esquire here says, I often think about that summer, the summer of 2022. When people how many, thought... How many, references, how many references we up to, Esquire? When people thought both BYU and Notre Dame would be good, now we know better. Both teams need... Both teams have a need to feel the thunder, to chase the lightning from the sky. But I genuinely have zero idea which team is going to successfully ride the heat of passion to a victory. With reasons to doubt both teams, I'm going I'm going to go with the team with the team getting the points. Also the reverse jinx of Ohio State strength of schedule resume. He picks BYU. That one was very heavy handed, Esquire. Congrats to everyone who who caught the references. Um, <laughs> All right. All right. Now, now we can cover the last game here, Jared, which is the which is our ACC game here. It is our eight o'clock uh, with Florida State. And NC State. 
NC State coming off that loss to Clemson and um, is a three and a half point favor over the Seminoles. All right, I will go first as Jared is yawning here. Uh, <laughs> I Long still, day, I, sorry. I, I, I really, I really like uh, Devin Leary as a quarterback. I think he's probably one of the one of the best quarterbacks in the ACC. But he's getting no support right now. If you watch that Clemson game last weekend, primarily so from his dropped, offensive coordinator, so many dropped balls from his receivers there, and yeah, and had like literally no time from his offensive line to scan the field to throw the ball, and because of the uh, the <laughs> the offensive coordinator too, I just I feel like this is. Devin Leary's in a long going to be uh, it's going to be a long season for him. Um, but yeah, I I still I still really like NC State's defense. NC State's defense is really good, um, only allowing 15 points a game, and in in letting up less than 100 rushing yards, which is something that uh, Florida State l- wants to do in this game is to be able to run up and down the field here. And I feel that NC state's defensive line is going to really suffocate uh, Florida state. And I'll, I'll pick NC state to cover this game. Cause I, th- I think they're the better team here at home night game. I, I feel, I feel like the NC state should be able to cover this. So I'll, I'll, I'll pick the wolf pack. Yeah. Both of these teams coming off of uh, their first losses last week, um, Florida state losing to wake. NC State losing to Clemson um, and say what you want to say about Clemson. They're not in like tier one like they were a couple years ago. But it's still a very talented football team. Um, you, you see a loss for NC State of like 10 points, but like. If it, it felt it, it didn't really even feel like NC State was ever going to win that game. So I feel like the the 10 points doesn't even tell that full story. Um, Florida State's biggest quality win right now is a one point win over LSU. Um, NC State, on the other hand, and while I do like Leary and I do like their defense, it's a little hard to find a quality win on their schedule. That's true. Um, yeah. It's so that that definitely hurts. Um, Florida State, aside from LSU, has at least like taken uh, Boston College to the woodshed. And I know that like you know, Boston College is still a power five football team. Right. Um, so. While I do like NC State. Given the strength of schedule and given the, the quality of opponents that these teams have played, I it, it, it's very hard for me to take NC State over Florida State with CBS with Vegas giving me three and a half points to take Florida State. So I'm going to take Florida State here. I think this is kind of a kind of a toss up. I might even lean a little bit towards Florida State to win this game, but just like like 51 49, right? So yeah, if you're gonna give me three and a half points, to take Florida State. I'm gonna I'm gonna take those points and run with them. All right. And Esquire with his final pick here says, uh, the inclusion of Kyle is not so secret and mistress. The NC State Wolf Pack. <laughs> I'm still disappointed they haven't gotten a live Wolf Pack uh mascot, um, which would ensure the win and cover. But after taking a hard-fought L to Clemson last week, Wolfpack howls at the moon and wins by at least a touchdown. Yeah. Kyle, that's all six of our games, all seven of our our games, if you include Thursday. Uh, But now, Kyle, it's time for our bonus segment. It's our bonus segment. We did this for the first time last week. Kyle, did you, who did you pick last week? Did you, did you get points? I didn't get points. Uh, Michigan won. Oh yes, I did. I did get points. Uh, let me, let me, let me go back. It was, uh, sorry. I got to go to the scores. For so yeah, last... you, you, 
you look that up. I'll I'll explain the game to everybody. Khan, I sure. uh, last week started uh, a game called Choose Chaos. Choose Your Chaos. Um, basically, the rules are we have to pick a non top twenty five team to beat a top twenty five team, and you get points based off of the like inverse of the team's ranking. So, for example, Kyle got. I got uh, eight points because I I thought that the Aggies were going to lose to the Bulldogs. And why did you get eight points? Just so everyone because understands the game. Aggie, Aggies were Aggies were uh, ranked 17th. So 25 minus 17. Yeah. Get you the eight points. Yeah. Essentially, if if you predict number one is going to lose, you get 25 points. If you predict number 25 yeah, so is going to lose, you get one point. Yeah, so if you um, if you predict like Purdue, I think they get it. To Kyle. Minnesota last weekend, <laughs> you got four points. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kyle. So choose your chaos. So we do have Tennessee and LSU playing each other. That's a rank on rank. So that's off the board. TCU Kansas playing each other. It's a rank on rank. That one's off the board. Utah UCLA off the board. Uh, right, so Esquire, so we, so we, I, I see you're still in the chat. If you're still listening, feel free to to pick your chaos as so, well. So, so the games to choose from here, Jared, is uh, the Bulldogs here, uh, the opposite side here. Bulldogs play Arkansas, Mississippi State versus Arkansas, uh, Cincinnati ranked versus South Florida, uh, Georgia versus Auburn, Oklahoma State versus Texas Tech. Uh, we're going to skip the Ohio State one because that's not happening. Uh, Ole Miss and Vanderbilt, Washington, Arizona State, Clemson, Boston College, USC, Washington State, Kentucky and South Carolina, Wake Forest and Army, uh, mentioned the BYU-Notre Dame game, Kansas State, Iowa State, Alabama and Texas A&M, uh, mentioned NC State, Florida State, and Oregon versus Arizona. It's a lot of games. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you you uh, decided to go know. on that endeavor and name all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Buckeye Squire says he'll take Notre Dame t uh, to beat BYU. I think that's a good one. Um, I think that there are there are a couple that I think are good quality ones. It helped you pick your chaos. So thanks, Kyle. Well, there you go, Kyle. It was worth it. I'm going to go with Florida State beating NC State because um, I, I Esquire, I agree with you that I think that one's very good. I do get two extra points for Florida State and NC State since NC State is 14 and BYU is 16. That's all honestly the only because I, I, I do like your pick a lot. That, I think that was my uh, that was my that was my uh, tiebreaker. Um, Kyle, any. Are you, are you at all tempted to get Texas? Hoosiers? No, Texas A&M. <laughs> no, not picking Texas A&M. I'm I just saying that's 20, pick... that's 25 points. Uh, man. <laughs> exactly. But... Spikes. That's, that's the attitude. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> um, you know, I'm I'm not a big fan. I'm like looking at all the games. I mean, I know, yeah, Notre Dame is probably a, a good pick. Um, don't and by the way, Kyle, don't feel like you can't pick something just because Esquire or I did. Like, don't don't yeah. feel free to. You don't. It doesn't have to be a unique pick. You know, I'll go, I'll go out of left field here. Uh -oh. uh, even though I think, even though I think they'll win the. Um, I think they'll they'll win the Big Twelve. I think they'll win the Big Twelve uh, this year, and they've had a lot of close games. But I think their offense is pretty powerful, and I think uh, this is going to be a really really high scoring game, which may come down to the end here. And I'm going to I'm going to do the Red Raiders over the Cowboys. That's a that's a that's a big money play right there. Oklahoma State that currently is. ranked seventh. Yeah, it's a big money play. Uh, Zach <laughs> says South Florida could upset UC. They could. Problem is UC's ranked 24th. It's only, you only get two points for that. 
Um, so while I agree with you that that could Again. happen, it's just not. It's it's probably it's just not worth the, not worth the gamble. Yeah, forget it. it's it's the subtracting whatever the ranked minus twenty five plus one because yeah. you get one. So so I get nine for for the last week. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah and for and for what it's worth, I do and like Cincinnati. I think is not nearly as good as they were last year. South, that's not a uh, that's Florida's not that's not a huge though. reach. But South Florida is very bad. Bad. Because because like another game, I was kind of looking at. I'm like, uh, maybe maybe the um, maybe maybe uh, Army surprises because you know you shouldn't play any yeah, of the Army. Ne- ne- never <laughs> never play the military academy. That's one of our rules. <laughs> Yep. Uh, what was the other game I, I saw that I was kind of briefly entertaining? It's like, oh, do you, what, what about what about Vanderbilt over Ole Miss? No. I, I my eyes stopped on that. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> All right, Jared. I because think, I've I been think... told, Kyle, I've been told that every single SEC game is tough. Yeah, that's what I've been told. Uh, so with that being said, how do you feel about Auburn and Georgia? I feel what's, more com- what's conf- the spread on more that? confident of uh, South Carolina defeating Kentucky than that game. I would. Yeah, same. I, uh, 30 points. Georgia's favored by 30 in that game. Yeah. But honestly, considering Auburn sucks, but Georgia does too. Georgia doesn't suck. Suck, no, they don't suck, no. but they're not not as they're good not, as they made it up to be. Well, they're not as good and as they were because last they year. play in the SEC and every game's tough. Yeah, but Georgia's seriously on like a two game slide right now. As far as like it feels res- that way. Yeah, because they barely beat Kent State. I don't I don't care if the final score was 17 points. They barely beat Kent State and then Missouri, who is. In my opinion, still in the Big Twelve. <laughs> I don't. I don't buy this SEC nonsense. Um, yeah, that I, was. I feel, I feel like this is a real game lame that, game as well. I feel like this is game that George is going to come out and just be a, and just assert their dominance in this game and just tell everybody, "Hey, we're we're back. We 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 fixed our issues." I feel, I feel like this is that kind of game for Georgia. Maybe, but it's Auburn. Like this is this is one of the worst Auburn teams we've seen in a long time. This is a terrible, terrible Auburn team. Um, Buckeyes Choir said, I almost picked Auburn, Georgia, but then I remembered how much Auburn sucked. Yeah, it's not just very very important uh, word choice there by Esquire. It's not just that Auburn sucks, it is the degree in which Auburn sucks. It is how much Auburn sucks. Yep. They're three and two, Jared. I, I don't, I don't care. Uh, interestingly enough, they also own. They also barely beat Missouri. They got ramshackled by Penn State. They have a win over Mercer and San Jose State. By the way, barely beating San Jose State. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh. It's, it's And it's one of the reasons why I'm not buying in on LSU, because LSU only beat them by four. Mm-hmm. I feel I feel like LSU barely beating Auburn is one of the ugliest things on LSU's schedule. That's how little I think of Auburn right now. Auburn sucks. I guess that's what I'm trying to say is that Auburn, Auburn sucks. Mm-hmm. They suck with like six U's. Yeah, in our last bonus game here, Jared, uh, will you be Georgia looks the- like 2015 Ohio State. I think yeah. that's apt. And yeah. you could say the same thing about like 2014 Florida State and a bunch of other teams who just kind of mailed it in the year after they won a national title. Jared, do you think you'll be up for uh, this weekend's Pac-12 after dark game? No. Probably not. I don't. I don't. Watch, I, you don't want to watch Oregon State and Stanford duke it out. Oh, that's what you're talking about. I thought you were talking. Um, no, I guess Oregon, Oregon, Arizona kicks off at nine. That's not too bad at all. I'll probably watch some of that if the uh, 
Florida State, NC State game doesn't doesn't go yard. Yeah. All right, that is it, Jared. That is our uh, sloop picks episode here. Uh, yeah, that that was a lot of fun. Um, I think this would be be a very entertaining weekend and a gut feeling. I don't think we're going to see too much uh, team chaos this weekend, which which probably means it, it will be team chaos type of weekend. <laughs> I feel like we were never lucky enough to get to in, in, unless it's 2007. We don't typically get to like crazy chaos weekends in a row, typically. But before man, you go, who wins Red River? God, how bad is it that we like didn't even <laughs> didn't acknowledge that game, yeah. <laughs> that that game is happening? Who's Bama Anybody play? Even... They play Texas A&M. <laughs> the fans. No, I don't think the fans win, Zach. Uh, Red River. Uh, I, 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 I'd pick the uh, the Sooners in this one. I know they got they got they got just crushed last weekend, but I have no faith in Texas. I don't like either of these teams. <laughs> Do I gotta pick one? Yeah, I'll I'll go Texas. Um, did you did you see did you see the games for next weekend, Jared? Yeah. Ne- Oh God, it's a wonderful week to have Ohio State on a bye week because yeah, next buddy. week, next week is an amazing lineup of football games. And you know what? And um upsets Bama. No, they aren't. I, I would love that I'd love to see it, but no, they aren't. Texas AM's and, a trash and, heap. Yeah, and it sucks, Jared, because uh and, and tell your friends to never do this, guys and gals. Uh oh. Never have has a wedding. Never have never have weddings. Yeah. I have a, I have a wedding next weekend i'm not going to be able to watch some of these great games so everyone make sure to constantly ping kyle in the discord server to keep him up to date <laughs> next weekend god i'm going to get the stare at me so <laughs> i mean yeah, you have, have your phone, your phone and- see spikes spikes is straight up telling you to stream to your phone I, I need to, I need to get um make sure my backup batteries are charged there you go <laughs> That's it's not, not your, your wedding. wedding. <laughs> God damn, I love that attitude. That's funny. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. I think that's it. Jared, go ahead and kick us off. <laughs> yep. Uh, tonight we're doing, uh, once again, we did them uh, yesterday. We'll do them again today. We're doing Sink the Ship to end today's show. If you're New here, Kyle, I kind of fast forwarded straight right into the end of the show. Are you cool with that? I'm tired. Do you yeah, think Kyle's corner? I, okay. Um, Kyle's corner. Uh, I don't really have anything in Kyle's corner, to be okay. honest. That's fine. We're fast forwarding to the end. Um, so yeah, tonight's ending show or tonight's ending music will be sync the ship. Um, if you're new to the show, uh the YouTube version of the show doesn't get music because that's how YouTube uh forces us to be. The podcast version of the show does get the music, but if you want to hear the music, there is a link down in the show notes and you can go listen to the song. So um, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Sink the Ship.